Let's go through another example of calculating a Laplace transform. So here's an example. Uh, let's, let's take f of t to be equal to 4 plus the cosine of 2t. So now we have two functions on the right-hand side. And one of them, we've already actually figured out the transform on a previous example when we did the transform of a constant function. Now the c value that we did in that example could be replaced by 4, and we can just write it down. What that means is that instead of dealing with the function f of t as given here, we want to treat this one by a formula, and then we're going to need to calculate this one. Well, when you are facing the Laplace transform, calculating the Laplace transform of a sum of functions, there's a simple observation that will make life a lot easier. So let's just state it here. The Laplace transform is linear. And that means as an operator, it acts in a very nice way through addition and scalar multiplication. So, as we've seen, the Laplace transform takes a y of t, or an f of t, some function of t, and it returns some function of s. So what that means is it acts, this thing script L acts to take functions as input and return other functions as output. So that's what we call an operator. Um, and so the Laplace transform is, in fact, an operator that's linear in its argument. So what that means is if you try to take the Laplace transform of y1 of t plus y2 of t, what do you get? Well, we can write this out. This is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st y1 of t plus y2 of t dt. And because of the way integrals and multiplication work, I can, in a few steps, rewrite this as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st y1 of t dt plus integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus st of y2 of t dt. Now, uh, this, this will only be true if both of these exist. So if I find that there's limits on the s values under which this integral exists, or if there are other limits that arise from this integral, um, then we have to look at the limited set where both of these are not causing any problems. In other words, just the s values for which both of these um, converge. And then I can always write this expression here for the complete Laplace transform broken up into these two pieces. And once we've done that, we can see that this is just the Laplace transform of y1 of t plus the Laplace transform of y2 of t. And that really just relied on the fact that when I have multiplication across the sum, I can multiply the e to the minus st by both of these. And when you're integrating the sum of two terms, as long as each of the pieces end up having well-defined integrals, you can separate an integral of a sum into the sum of the two integrals. And so what that means is that addition behaves nicely through Laplace transforms. That's one of the conditions that we need for linearity of, a, of an operator. And the other one is that c times y of t also behaves nicely. And by that, I mean that the integral from 0 to infinity of c e to the minus st y of t dt has to be equal to well, we know for integrals that the c is constant with respect to, whoops, there should be a dt there. This integral, the c should be um, constant with respect to the t. 
And so that means that we can pull it out of the integral sign and write it as c times the integral e to the minus st y of t dt. And that now tells us that c times a function transformed is the same as c times the transform of the function y. And these two combined tell me that the Laplace transform is linear. And it also tells me that if I'm calculating the Laplace transform of f of t, then really I just have to calculate the transform of 4 and add to that the Laplace transform of cosine 2t, and I get the same answer. Now the Laplace transform of 4, as we saw in our first video on Laplace transforms, this will be equal to 4 divided by s, and the Laplace transform of cosine 2t will require a little bit more work, and I'll do that in a subsequent video. This trick works in general when you have a sum of functions. You can treat them separately, take their transforms, and then add them up. So if you know formulas for all or most of them, you can apply the formula to the pieces and then assemble your answer.